This week on Waterways. Critters of South Florida. Why do millions of tourists flock to South Florida every year? For many, it is the world-class fishing. For others, it is the lure of diving or snorkeling the reef ecosystem just miles off the mainland keys. However, if one delves further into the motives of these visitors, the underlying draw is the same, the wildlife. For South Florida and the Florida Keys have the most abundant variety of critters anywhere in the United States. For fishermen, the variety of fish an angler can target is astounding. Anglers consistently claim that South Florida and the Florida Keys has one of the largest variety of species of any fishing grounds in the world. Offshore in the Gulf Stream, you'll find sailfish, dolphin, tuna. A little closer to shore at the reef, anglers can catch grouper, snappers, barracuda. Moving into the shallows and towards the keys in Florida Bay, tarpon, redfish, bonefish, snook. And in all of these places, sharks of every size and design. For divers and snorkelers at the reef, life bursts forth from every direction and from every nook and cranny. Whether in the skies, on the land, or underwater, South Florida is teeming with life. The list is long and one could spend a lifetime studying just one of these creatures. Today, Waterways will take you on a sightseeing tour. We won't get to all of the thousands of animals that live here, but hopefully this introduction will entice you to learn more about these magnificent ecosystems. For if it is left to only a handful of scientists and resource managers to be stewards of this national treasure, conservation efforts could fall short. Without public support for conservation policies, many of these animals could be lost forever, like the American passenger pigeon and the Carolina parakeet. As one travels southward from the heart of Florida, we soon enter Big Cypress National Preserve. Here, the landscape is varied. Pines, hardwoods, prairies, mangrove forests. Lurking among these habitats is one of the most magnificent and most endangered animals in South Florida, the Florida panther. Today, the Florida panther lives in a fraction of its original range, the remnants of undeveloped lands in Southwest Florida. It is estimated that 1,360 Florida panthers existed before European settlers moved into South Florida. This number is based upon the carrying capacity of Florida's natural communities for white-tailed deer and taking into account predators as well as Native American hunters. Today, the current estimated population of Florida panthers in the wild is 50 to 70 animals. Sharing the panther's spot on the top of the food chain is the American crocodile. 
Also on the endangered species list, the American crocodile lives in areas where fresh and salt waters mix, such as coastal wetlands and canals. While the South Florida populations have stabilized, there are only approximately 1,000 American crocodiles left in Florida. These crocodiles are relatively docile. Unlike their relatives featured on nature shows devouring wildebeests and wrestling humans. However, don't confuse this mellow creature with another of South Florida's largest reptiles, the American alligator. Often confused with the American crocodile, the American alligator has a more rounded snout than the crocodile and is a darker green, almost black. First listed as an endangered species in 1967, the American alligator was removed from the endangered species list in 1987 after the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service pronounced a complete recovery of the species. Today, well over a million alligators can be found in Florida, Louisiana, Texas, and Georgia. These alligators will eat almost anything they can get their jaws around, including the myriad of wading birds that populate South Florida. Herons. Egrets. Ibis, wood storks, and the roseate spoonbill. The roseate spoonbill has faced a series of problems through the past 100 years. One problem piling on the previous, contributing to an increasingly hostile environment. From the enterprising plume hunters of the late 19th and early 20th centuries to the loss of habitat from drainage of South Florida's wetlands to build deep water canals, the spoonbill faces new hurdles every decade. Recently, a few of the spoonbill's favorite nesting keys in Florida Bay have come under attack by increased boat traffic. Noise and commotion created by boats cause the skittish spoonbills to flee their nests leaving eggs and baby spoonbills to opportunistic predators, like crows and raccoons. The nests need only be abandoned for a few short minutes to succumb to predation. And as human habitat expands, the wilderness shrinks, placing greater importance on protected areas like Everglades National Park and the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. Sharing the skies and sometimes preying on the spoonbill is the symbol of America, the bald eagle. In the eastern U.S., the bald eagle is the largest raptor and is commonly associated with large bodies of water. Bald eagles are considered common in South Florida and are known to breed throughout the state, but are listed as a threatened species. Juvenile bald eagles do not have the stark white head that make adults easy to identify and these young will reach full size in just 60 days. Sharing the skies with bald eagles and winning the admiration of birders is the master fisherman, the osprey. These incredible birds can dive underwater while hunting and are the envy of every sight fishing angler who shares their hunting grounds. Ospreys build their conspicuous nests on structures such as channel markers and telephone poles to protect their young from human activity and predators such as raccoons. Sometimes the only place for the ospreys to nest is on a black mangrove just a few feet off the ground. After hatching, the two ounce chicks become flyers within eight weeks. Ospreys hunt by soaring over water, scanning the surface for schooling or spawning fish. While osprey populations in South Florida are strong, researchers are concerned about high contents of mercury in their diets. Some of their favorite fish, such as the catfish, have been found to have dangerously high contents of mercury.
There are hundreds of bird species that make South Florida their home for at least a portion of the year. Pelicans, white and brown. The pelicans one sees hovering over the shallows and suddenly darting into the surface waters is the brown pelican. White pelicans will float on the surface and dip their large bills, scooping up their prey. Frigates, which fishermen look for in the skies, as a sign that fish populate the waters below. And comorants, who rival the osprey as the master fisherman, diving to depths of 100 feet to catch their prey. They are such great fishermen that in China, a species of comorant is utilized in the commercial fishing trade. The fishermen place a restrictive noose around the comorant's neck, which prohibit the swallowing of the caught fish. Fishermen can catch hundreds of fish a day without touching hooks, nets, or bait. And the white crowned pigeon, which can fly up to 30 miles an hour and nests on the mangrove islands off the mainland keys. Equally amazing is the sooty tern, which each year flock to the dry tortugas to nest on a 14-acre island next to Fort Jefferson, drawing bird watchers from around the globe. As many as 175,000 nest here, their only nesting location in the United States. Also found at Dry Tortugas, on Bush Key, is the Brown Knotty, also the only nesting colony in the continental United States. In 1919, this colony was roughly estimated at 35,000 nests. Feral rats that accidentally escaped from ships have sometimes proven to be a severe problem to the birds. By 1938, the colony had been reduced to only 400 pairs. Hurricanes helped to control the rat population, and by 1964, the brown knotties had increased to about 2,000 pairs. Because of its restricted breeding range in Florida, it is listed as a species of special concern by the Florida Committee on Rare and Endangered Plants and Animals. Joining the pantheon of migrating birds that travel through South Florida each year are a myriad of warblers. and hawks. One need only visit South Florida during the peak migratory months in the spring and especially in the autumn to witness these airborne travelers numbering in the hundreds of thousands. For an observant visitor, migrating birds in the sky and wading birds in the shallows are a common sight. But under the surface of the water, there are many creatures that elicit shrieks of joy from their witnesses. One of the most magical is, of course, the bottlenose dolphin. It is estimated that these creatures live to be about 30 years old. They can be found from the shallow banks of Florida Bay to the deeper waters of the Atlantic.
Adult bottlenose dolphins can reach lengths of 8 to 12 feet, and the males are larger than the females. The males reach sexual maturity at about 10 years. Females reach sexual maturity at about 5 to 10 years. The gestation period is 12 months, and the calves stay with their mothers for 3 to 6 years, learning how to catch fish and be a dolphin. Sharing the spotlight as one of the most sought-after sightseeing sea mammals is the manatee. Manatees average 1,000 to as much as 1,500 pounds in weight, with adults reaching about 12 feet in length. These huge animals are sometimes referred to as the sea cow because of their affinity for munching hours on end upon seagrass, about 150 pounds a day. In the year 2000, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission counted a little more than 2,200 manatees in South Florida. Unfortunately, the Florida manatee is on the brink of extinction. Not because of predation, for they are way too large for any animals, say very large sharks, to devour, but because of human interference. As one travels deeper into the depths of South Florida waters, there is found many commercially important species. The spiny lobster, pink shrimp, but the stars of the marine ecosystem are found a few miles offshore on the Florida Keys Reef Tract. Among the sedentary hard corals and swaying soft corals, which are live animals themselves, live thousands of species of fish. from sharks, to tropicals, There are not enough scientists in the world or hours in a day to fully understand them all. Some of them, like groupers and snappers, are sought after as dining delicacies. Other species, like stingrays, which are a delicacy for the eyes, demonstrate the grace and sublime beauty of this underwater realm. Today, these species are enjoyed in their native habitats by millions of divers and snorkelers each year.
some reef species are so bizarre in looks and behavior that divers may feel transported to another time, another place. Passing by these angelfish and parrotfish in a slow, methodical traverse is one of the ocean's oldest inhabitants, the sea turtle. Green turtles, loggerheads, hawksbills, these slow-moving reptiles are all threatened, on the brink of disappearing forever mostly due to the loss of suitable nesting beaches and the result of years of poaching. It would be an insurmountable task to try and list every animal that lives in South Florida. While Waterways diligently seeks to incite interest from the public and their surroundings, it is up to you, the viewer, to take the steps to learn more. After you turn off your television, surf the web, read a book, attend a lecture. From key deer to Bermuda chubs, the abundance of life in South Florida can be like a treasure hunt that never ends. For those who enjoy ecotourism, viewing the variety of animals that populate South Florida is awe-inspiring. Some, like the osprey and the American alligator, are stabilizing. Others or not. Imagine South Florida without the roseate spoonbill, without the Florida panther, without the manatee. Would it be the same? Would these species be missed? Would the economy of South Florida be affected? The purpose of conservation efforts is not to instill fear, but to impart knowledge but it takes the power of the people to enact change and maintain it.